Hello, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips on the second Monday of the week, the first Monday of the week for me. I am your host, Anne, and of course, we have disembodied voice and hands, John and Justin, with us riding herd. How are you all today? Yeah, I'm fine. Carrie, it's it's rare, like, these days. Like, it's been, it's been a very, 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 very long time since I've actually been sick. And so they had to actually poke it into my arm to make me sick, essentially, <laughs> this time. And it never lasts more than a day. Like, like I, my immune system is, like, crazy aggressive. I mean, that's part of the problem. <laughs> but yeah, my fever broke last night. And that was the big thing, is the fever just kept me from sleeping the one night, Sunday night. And that was just, like, that totally killed me. So yeah, yeah, I, I kick this stuff off fast. Like I am not one of those person, people who get sick and just like, it just drags on. I'm just, I'm not that. I kick it in a day, mostly because I get enough sleep and like, you know, take care of myself. <laughs> I think a lot of people probably just are getting low sleep and that, that makes them sadder. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. How are you guys all doing? We're going to do orcs today. But yeah, yesterday was a miserable day. Miserable day. So it makes me glad that I didn't actually get, like, COVID, like, during the whole course of the thing. Because I would have probably been pretty miserable if that was, if yesterday was any, any uh, indicator. Let's see here. I need, what am I doing today, guys? Hey, look, I did green work. Hold on. So I did just a simple little... Simple bit of green work up on her staff. I could put a gem up there if I wanted to. Um, made that rounded area. Oh, no. <laughs> the cats were up in arms because no Anne. Yeah, well, you know, the cats need to give me a day off sometimes, Kariko. <laughs> what are you going to do when it's Memorial Day? And, you know, I'm going to take, because um, I'm going to, David and I are doing a driving trip down the coast a bit to Monterey and a little bit beyond. Your ickiness said two days. Yeah, Carrie, I feel you. But yeah, so I did a little green work so that her spear actually looks like a spear now. It has a, um, a point. It's a little rougher on the backside, but I figured... I was, like, just trying to get it get it there. So now I could I could take some green in and further fix it. Or I could just go with it. Um, my green is very sticky because I just unfroze it, so it's super fresh. Morning, Adams. Morning, Twistoma. YouTube is always the answer. I don't know. Let's work on... Should we work on red today? I'm still thinking about accent colors on this piece. It's a uh, it's very, very hard, difficult piece. So as you recall, we put the black lace around the neck of her dress, so that helped a bit last time. So, yeah, maybe we should do our reds today. I'm still thinking maybe a dark blue... If I go with a dark blue for the, um, the cape thing, that means I might go with a light blue for the accents. Because that's something you can do. If you are trying not to get, like, crazy amounts of colors all over your figure, but you're looking for an accent color, um, you can vary it. You can use a dark version of the color here and a light version of the color there. So essentially we could do, like, a dark blue on her wrap, and then we could do a light blue crystal um, and glass on the bottle there. Um, and maybe put some red liquid inside the bottle if we really wanted to. We could also... Um, I'm trying to think of where else, because if we feel like we need some uh, some red higher up, then we can maybe even do like a fade, like a blue to red fade up at the tip of the staff. Um, we could do that. Any of that sort of stuff. Hey, Axel. Good morning or evening or whatever you are, wherever you are, since I know we have many European people who is later in the day for them. So, yeah, yeah, all of that. So that's what I did. That's what I did the other day. Um, let's, let's bring the red up. Let's, let's do some red today. Do, 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 do. So we ended on, uh, down here we ended on Asmodeus and I, I took it more with white, with fire red up at the top. So maybe we'll continue with fire red, which is more of a carmine. And my carmine, I'm, I, um, I'm speaking of like carmine as like the old Vallejo color Carmine red to me is a little bit cooler and a little bit lighter than a standard red. So it's a, it's a lightish red for those who are familiar with the old red and blue, um, red versus blue, um, YouTube stuff. Uh, 
But uh, so it's a, it's it's actually a slightly lighter than a regular red, and it is a little bit cooler. And it'll be interesting to see whether we like that or we want to rooster teeth. Yes, exactly. Yes, I, I can I can bring in the red versus blue references. I actually really loved that. <laughs> I loved that series. There were so many good moments in that series. Hello, Nikki Minis. Hey, crows. Uh, it was it was uh, just a fever yesterday that really got me, crows, because it kept me from sleeping the night before. Like I don't even think the fever and the swollen glands stuff was was too terrible. Like it, you know, it's it was blah, but but it was mostly the fact that the sleeper the fever kept me from sleeping. That's like that's death to me. Like I've got to get good sleep, or I am just like tanked, like no energy, and I can't keep a straight th train of thought. So. <laughs> I I get the Axel's vote because I know I, I know red versus blue. You can blame my uh, my roommate at the time, my housemate at the time, uh, John Bono, who also uh, has taught at ReaperCon before. Um, John uh, is the one who used to play it, so we sat and watched it all the time. Alrighty, I think I'm gonna go with Sunrise here. I'm gonna see what kind of orange I can get. Even though this is a cooler red, I'm gonna cross the streams and see what I get. <laughs> that reference I don't get because uh because it's been a long time. <laughs> I don't remember everything. My uh I actually don't consume much like content. Like I'm not a big I'm more a content creator and less of a content consumer. But there we go. Oh, that's a nice orange, actually. I like that. We'll, we'll work with that. All right, so that's the orange I made. Oh, just a question. Oh, Z's? Yeah, yeah. No, I, eight hours. If I get a good eight hours, I'm good. But I've got to get, like, at least seven, and seven is still where I start to feel iffy. Anything below seven is death. <laughs> Ten hours, though. Wow. Your body must be, like, super intense. It's like, I need fuel. You're not a freak, though. There are people who just need that much sleep. Just like there are freakish... The people who I think are freakish are the people who can survive on, like, four or five hours. Like, and still, like, function. I'm like, I could do that at one point in my life when I was, like, younger. But even then, I was super grumpy and I wouldn't track real well and, yeah... It was just less than ideal. Morning, Val. Hey, and resub. Ten months. Thanks, Val. Super appreciate it. There. So I've got a couple of colors. Oh, military trained. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that'll do it, right? Because you have to. You have to function. Yeah? Well, you never know. Maybe it's by the day. <laughs> military means you have zero hours. Okay, you're married to a cat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Twisted Homa. <laughs> you are married to a cat. That's funny. Yeah, I was never, like, I could survive on it, but I was never good on it, right? Like, there were some people who just seems like, they're like, go, 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 go. I don't know if they just have super high metabolisms or what. Or maybe their sleep is just really effective when they get it. But I need eight hours. Like, we go to bed by, I have to get to bed by 11.15. Like, that's my late, that's my point. And if I go beyond that, then it's dangerous. Yeah. Oh, 10. See, 10, yeah, 10 is a little bit, I start to feel too tired if I get too much. I think 9 might be my, my upper limit. All right, so we're going to go up a little bit different here. I'm actually gonna kind of test this up on top. I want to grab some of this orange and just get it in a little bit of a glaze and glaze up here on the top of the dress because I went kind of more pink up there and I don't want to go pink with these highlights. I actually want to warm them up. Especially if my accent color is blue here. If my accent color is blue, then putting this orange in here is a sneaky thing that will essentially, there we go. Now we have much more orange. 
the sneaky thing will essentially get us uh, sneak in a complementary color to the, our blue uh, blue color. So when you're looking, naps are all, yeah. I power nap every day, almost every day. Like, yeah. Oh, that's awful. Like, and I don't know why. I mean, I guess they do that to you just in case you run into that Axel. But I never got it because I was just like. You want your military people to be making good decisions and at a high level of performance. And study after study has proven that when you stay awake for longer than a certain amount of time, your judgment dies. Like, you, you can't make good decisions. So I'm just like, crazy talk. Yeah, yeah, you start to get delirious. It's actually a thing. Like, it's, it's what our brains do to deal with not having sleep. They really, really desperately need sleep. Go figure, right? <laughs> You're in the six hour camp? Yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, Vekaroa. Thank you for the small little raid. Yay. We're working on things uh, today. Things. <laughs> like, we're ever not working on things. Thanks, Anne. That was great. Okay, maybe my brain still needs a couple days. <laughs> oh, dear. Dear me. Um, all right. So, uh, so what we did is we actually mixed a bit of... Uh, I'm using Sunrise Orange. This is one of my favorite orange mixers. Um, it's a really good middle of the road orange. It has decent coverage. It it makes um, I'm using it to mix a darker orange between that and my fire red, and then I'm gonna actually add a little bit of this darker orange back to my sunrise to make another orange transition. A little bit lighter. Um, oranges can be hard to blend, so that's why I'm going with so many colors so close together. Where usually I would tend to um, go further apart, but just thin them more. But here I'm stepping up gradually. Oh, 60 hours. Ugh. Yuck. I've done 48, and that was that was rough, and I had to have a nap at the end of it. Hey, Bryce. Glasses with the chains? No, because, like, either I'm... If I have them on for, like... All, all of the stream, Axel, but I don't normally need glasses. Like, my vision's actually better than 2020, except for close-in stuff. So these are these are just reading glasses, and they're otherwise I don't wear glasses at all. Although I always wanted to. You know, when you're the kid with good eyes, and you, you see your friends who have to wear glasses, and you're like, I wish I wear glasses. And they're like, ah, I wish I didn't have to wear glasses. You know, it's got that kind of thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so they don't fall off my face, and I only wear them for painting, so... Although it is getting to the point where I almost need to bring a pair with me to the supermarket because if I have to look at ingredients, I'm like, <laughs> you know, way out here looking at the ingredients. Uh, yeah, you'll have hallucinations. Yeah, your brain will do that. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, there's, there's all sorts of science behind sleep these days. All right, so let's talk about col complementary colors and how you can be sneaky because this is how I, I've been recommending this sort of thing for years. Um, but it doesn't hurt to recommend it yet again. Yeah, that's the military thing, which is kind of cool, right? The fall asleep anywhere, anytime thing. I do go to sleep fast, though. I've trained myself that when I go to bed, I go to sleep. So, so I usually I fall asleep pretty fast. All right, so here's the sneaky thing. We have figured out that we're going dark blue on the cloth, right? And, I mean, she's going to probably have black hair, unless I decide to go brown with it. Um, I haven't decided. Technically, Orc, I could do either. Um, but I'm that means I'm probably going light blue with my crystal staff, my crystal spear. And um, light blue would be a great color for the bottle, too, because it's usually the color you paint clear glass. Um, the reason for that is that, of course, it's clear bla glass, but then it's also, like, reflecting the sky if she's outside. So you tend to find when people are trying to depict glass, um, they tend to put it have, it, have it be a pale blue. So that would all go together really well. Now, the complementary color to blue is orange. And when you want your colors to pop, it's smart to have complementary colors somewhere on your figure. Now, I'll probably go brown with the leather, and that's a muted orange. But if I really want to sneak some more orange in here, the place I can do it is in the highlights of my red. Because you can bring your red up with orange. Um, and it actually is the way I tend to like to bring up red. Like, I like a warm red. So, essentially, I'm using some of this, uh, these colors that I've mixed. My carmine, my fire red, 
plus a little bit of sunrise orange here, which is about four drops of uh, carmine to two drops of sunrise. Then I grabbed uh, four drops of sunrise and just like a big brush full of this and brought it over to mix this. So sunrise is where we'll go next. And we'll see, we'll see though how far I can get with this. Now, when you do this, obviously you want to make your highlights really small because otherwise your red starts to look orange and everybody I think has had this experience. So again, it's, uh, it's what I call surface control, which is controlling the amount of surface that each highlight has. And if I want her dress to stay a dark red, and this is where I like look at people and say, you know, hey, your red could use more highlights. And they're like, but I want it to be a dark red. And I'm like, that doesn't mean you don't highlight it. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep this dark red dress, but we're going to highlight it. Um, and the secret here is keeping your highlights small and focusing on the details. So here on her midriff, she does have some folds that we need to accentuate. And I'm using my um, Da Vinci Maestro Series 10, size 1. Now, I'm using just my Fire Red for this. And since Fire Red is kind of close to the color I want things to stay, I'm not going to be um, limiting it too much. But I do want to keep some really dark shadows there. Dramatic shadows on those folds. Hey, Outer Mama. Good morning. Yeah, I'm sure Grey Mouser, it has the psychological thing going on for it. I used to have um, nightmares when I was a kid. I didn't understand. When I was a little kid, I didn't understand about the draft, that I was female and that I wouldn't get drafted. I used to have nightmares about getting drafted. So just to give you kind of an idea, I was never... My brother wanted to go into the military, but his I think his eyes weren't, weren't good enough. He wanted to go into the Air Force, um, but he ended up not doing it. So he went to college instead and... Now he's an architect, so I guess he doesn't really regret it. <laughs> Let's see. I want to get... I want to bring out a shadow color here. Hold on. What do I want to use? Ergothoa. But yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Military service people, like, they do crap for us that I certainly, like I said, used to have nightmares about. So all the respect to dudes. But my dad was Navy, actually, which is why I even thought about this stuff as a kid. Um, but yeah, it was not for me, for sure. Even when I understood it better later in my life. That was not my path. But I have, like, friends who are, like, hard care hardcore who are, like, army nurses during Vietnam and stuff. So, uh, you know, that, that's some, that's some hardcore. Um, ah, you haven't had a draft. Yeah. Yeah, well, I didn't understand it very well. Remember, I was a little kid at the time, so. Little kids don't understand stuff. They just get scared of stuff that they don't understand. Alrighty. So I want to also bring up um, under here. Now, this is an area that's rough, right? Because underneath her breast here... We have some folds, but there's also going to be a shadow. So I have to add in a little bit of highlight down here that I can see the fold. I do want to bring it up. I mixed up some Ergothoa Red just so I could have a shadow that I could work with just in case I needed to define stuff. Because when you're working with little tiny folds, there we go. So there's that little highlight there, see? Um, when you're working with little tiny folds, it's, it's often difficult, like sometimes you'll almost wipe out the folds. So you always want to keep your shadow color around so that you can um, readjust. You don't want to lose your shadow. Oh yeah, sorry. Let me see if I can turn my mic just a little. I have the window open in here because otherwise it'll get super stuffy and David's on a call in the other room. Um, but if we continue to get bad saw, I will have to close it. Uh, so I made, I called my mom Sunday to wish her a happy Mother's Day. And uh, I've been looking, David, David and I are kind of like tentatively starting to look around here for like housing, like for actually buying. And uh, I've, so I've been looking at stuff. 
And of course, it's super expensive. You know, it's the Bay Area. It's ridiculous. So I was telling her, she, I'm like, you could buy a freaking castle for this in Wisconsin. And, and you could have a mother-in-law castle attached to it. And that's how much you could get for this money. <laughs> it's like the mother-in-law castle totally cracked her up. Instead of the mother-in-law house. I don't know if they have those where you guys are, but in... In Wisconsin, that was the joke. You had the house and then, you know, your little house was the mother-in-law house. There was a bigger, uh, a bigger house that had used to be part of an estate in our neighborhood when I was growing up. And we were joking because that had a tiny little house attached to it. And then my mom told me it was the mother-in-law house. Yeah, I, um, my fever broke last night, Pendrake. It's, I, I don't really, like, honestly, I, since I started, like, ketogenic diet, I have not been sick. Like, I'm serious here. I don't know. That diet must just love me. But, um, apparently they had to, like, actually inject sickness into me in order to get me sick. But, um, but yeah, when I do get, uh, like, in the past, when I got a cold and stuff, it would get, I was done in a day. Like, my immune system tends to be very aggressive on that. If I get sleep. If I'm able to get sleep, if I can't get sleep, then, then that's a, you call it a granny flat. Awesome. Yeah. So essentially for the amount of money you would spend on a house here in the Bay area, you could get a granny castle attached to your real castle <laughs> anywhere else except New York city, probably. <laughs> but you know, like I grew up in Wisconsin, in rural Wisconsin for this amount of money, you could build a castle with a granny castle right next door and you'd still have money left over. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's just ridiculous what we're looking at. Um, I was looking in our neighborhood, really, there's nothing in the price range that that David would be looking for, except for like a townhouse, which wouldn't be bad. He likes urban living, but I'm I'm still looking up in the mountains. We actually there are a couple of like houses up in the mountains near us, relatively near us, like 25 minutes from us that uh, that are actually big steals. And so we're, we're trying to figure out why it's got to be like either that it, there's a fire hazard and the insurance is, is like a huge cost, right? The hidden cost or um, up there is also because it is a fire hazard and they're up in the forests. Uh, there tends to be power outages, right? So, so we're like, there's these two huge, like I would call them mansions, like, and they're like 2 million, which is actually like, devastatingly low for the amount of house and and land like it's in the mountains you're up in the glorious like wilderness you have amazing views it's a huge house and uh so we were trying to figure out yesterday like what what's the downside it's gotta be downside not mudslides but um but fires up here pendre because every fire season seems to be worse than the last lately and we're and we're in a drought right now so right now the fire this summer is going to be bad <clears throat> for fires so and it's too bad because the one house i think is absolutely beautiful i'm like if it was if it was like two-thirds the size <laughs> i would love to live in the mountains i would absolutely love it since i was little i thought about like maybe by getting a house in colorado because i like the mountains but yeah it's fires Kinda chibi, kinda, yeah, but it's not far. Like I said, it's 25 minutes from Google campus, which is not a bad commute. Um, we looked it up yesterday, the, the housing that we were looking at. It's about, it's like five minutes out of Los Gatos, like proper, which is a, a small town, a, a small town, but that's very like touristy and has a lot of cool restaurants and things. Um, and only 25 minutes from Google campus. So that's not, maybe, I don't know if people are spoiled here or if like, <laughs> I mean, I know that the commutes tend to be like bad, but that's more going into the city and coming from Los Gatos to Mountain View, not as much, not as much traffic. So yeah. Yeah. See, it, it is. Maybe it's haunted. Oh, I would be so happy. Kernika. This place seriously is, is beautiful though. Um, it is, uh, it, like I said, if it was two thirds the size, um, I would be looking at David and making like big baby eyes at him, but I don't want to live where, you know, it's going to get burned down <laughs> either. <laughs> like I could get used to like, you could, I, I have to imagine you could work around the lack of power because you could install solar, but <laughs> so, um, all right, guys, we're going to actually highlight. Let's actually talk about stuff that is not like all over the place here. Talking to them, pay cash for, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
No, that's absolutely true. And a ton of Californians are still moving to Austin. California's population last year sunk for the first time in the state's history. In all of its history. It went low. What lower than it was. I guess I couldn't, you know, alone me moving out here couldn't overbalance that. So let's use some fire red. And we're going to start highlighting our dark red up here. But we're going to leave a lot of this dark red in place. So we're going to make our highlights smaller. Um, do, 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 do. Socrates, thank you so much. Oh, happy subversary. Happy subversary. Happy subversary. Happy subversary. Yay. And you're a philosopher, so that's even cooler. We lived in a haunted house in New York. Totally freaked the cats out. Oh, dear. Bob and Julie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Portland. Yep. Yeah. And it, it varies, right? It's like, It's been like Seattle and then Portland and then and Colorado was in there and now it's Texas. Especially because big tech, there's a lot of big tech like growing up in Texas. So. But yeah. So it seems like a lot of people try to escape from here. I don't know. I like it here. I, I escaped to California. I guess I'm a weirdo. I guess that, that was always my mother's worry, though, was that the weirdness vibes out here infected my brain as a baby. And that was why I turned out so weird. <laughs> she blamed California. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start with I'm going to make these highlights now. Here's the deal. You still want to make your highlights broader when they're when it's going to be in a place where the light is hitting. So here, you can see how the dress light comes out, right? So if light's falling down, it's going to hit those that area the strongest, right? These This side of the dress where it's kind of spreading out. Remember, that's why we highlighted on the inside of these folds also. Because we knew that the light would be hitting there because it's going to be falling down. So I'm going to come in here and I am going to put a sizable highlight down at the bottom. However, remember the rule here, right? Like whatever color is taking up 75% of a fold is the color it's going to look. And I'm not actually going to bring up necessarily this dark red here. I might put a little glaze, maybe a little glaze up here to pull it together. So when you do this, then you grab a damp or dry brush and you come back and you Grab up all that extra, fru extra fluid. Make sure that it comes off of there before it dries. And that is a glaze. There. So you want it wet, but you know what? No puddles. No puddles at all. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, I, we're probably not looking, like, seriously up there. Because we both are conscious of the fire, the fire hazard and... And apparently the fire insurance is also insane up there just because of that. Like you'd almost like, you'd almost pay as much of your more as, as your mortgage in fire insurance. Like it's insane. So not worth it. That's probably why they had to price it so low. Otherwise it's easily a $4 million house, four or 5 million. But if you're, uh, if your fire insurance is five grand a month, then, uh, I don't know, Bryce. I haven't looked uh, at, like, I looked at pictures, but I don't know otherwise. Um, okay, so let's see here. So I do want a little bit of a highlight on this fold up here. Just a little bit. You want to highlight enough that you can bring out the nice details. And here you want to highlight to make it stand out from the shadow behind it of this fold back here. So you want just a little bit. Now, you're all going to notice I'm using my layering brush stroke on this one. When you're working on a vertical surface, with the exception of when you're working on the foot here, when you're working on the foot of the dress, you can use a vertical stroke. But don't use a vertical stroke to highlight on, on long, narrow surfaces like this. Use a sideways stroke. The reason is that if you use a vertical stroke, and I see people do this all the time, you're going to leave these line highlights. And because it's a long, narrow area and you're putting a long, narrow brush stroke, people are, your brush strokes are going to show up easily. Like, boom, no blending for you. Um, but when you thin your paint and you use a sideways stroke on these big, broad areas, 
that is not the same shape or direction as the rest of the surface, the sculpted surface. So it confuses the eye more and makes it easier for you to get a nice blend like this. Yeah. Yeah, I love deserts, but uh, I do. It is lovely here. I would like to live up in the mountains. I don't know. I'm going to keep looking up up in Los Gatos, but I may look in the valley the town is in or closer to it. Um, because I mean, David loves loves urban lo loves living urbanly, but he also loves natural beauty. So he looked at that house yesterday and he was like, "Wow, you know," because the views were amazing. It's right by the redwood preserves up there. It's uh, pretty awesome, but so the area is neat. We're probably gonna look at a whole bunch of different stuff. I don't know. The problem is really, I want a place where I can have a dog. So my primary, my primary things are, it has to have an amazing kitchen and it has to have, uh, you know, like dog, it has to be dog friendly. So we're going to use, again, now down near the bottom, since the, since folds tend to be wider, you can use the up and down stroke. But if you, if you have room, still try to go sideways. It's still going to make a better blend for you. Notice how little highlight I'm putting on these. Notice that most of the red is still dark red. Yeah, it's going to take, we're not in a hurry. Like, it'll take two years, maybe, Chibi. Like, this is just, but we had to start sometime. If you don't start, you never get there. Um, and, I mean, David and I have never even looked at a house together. So I don't know what his, like, what he hates, what I hate, what he loves, what I love, right? It might, we, I have no idea. Like, it's going to be the same. I think we're kind of in line with each other, but eh. He does want to give me a bigger kitchen, so I'll cook more. <laughs> yes, it needs to be a dog-worthy house. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, green users. Lucky you for the haunted house. Not, right? Probably um, happy not to be haunted anymore. At least they didn't follow you. All right, so now I'm going to turn this upside down. So again, you want to always have work with your hand at a comfortable angle, guys, so that you can have control. It's not just you want to be comfy because you want to be comfy. It's because if your hand is at a comfortable angle, you have better control. So in this case, I'm going to turn the model upside down so I can get my comfortable brush stroke coming in this way. My red is a little thin. I'm going to add just a little, or a little thick, rather. I'm going to add just a little water to it. It's very arid lately here. It's very dry. It was like 86 yesterday and I was taking a walk and it felt like I was taking a very slow walk because of the fever, but it felt a lot cooler in the shade because it's been so arid here. Weird. Yeah, exactly, Outer Mama. Right. Yeah, go through model homes to help you get motivated. Yeah, that's what we're going to just start seeing places. Because it would keep me motivated to look, and it also will let me know what David's deal breakers are, because David doesn't know until he sees it, and then it's like, oh, I don't like that, you know? So then I can take make a little mental check mark. Oh, interesting. That's pretty cool. That's cool that you got to buy on the bust. Sadly, out here, I doubt we're going to have a bust, Otter. The only thing that could happen is if, if people who bought homes during the pandemic, like maybe just impulse bought a home and then regretted it. And then people who were waiting for the pandemic to be over because they were already planning to sell, but they didn't want to sell during a pandemic. Like, so we might get a little bit of a softening in the market, but I think so many people are looking to buy that I doubt it's going to go down much. And this is such prime real estate. Like we're in freaking Mountain View. Google campus is 10 minutes away. So it's like, there are tons of, I told David that he's like, well, maybe the market will soften. I'm like, how many people are you at your campus again? Enough to be a small city all on its own. And uh, at least a portion of those people are going to be looking to buy rather than rent at some point. So that's why the housing is, uh, is like that. And neither one of us are really like handy people. So as far as like personally renovating an older property, that's like beyond, it's out of our league. So all right, so, so you can see how little that highlights. See that like edge highlight that I brought up the side here? 
And the key with keeping your red dark, again, is to keep a lot of this luscious dark red on the inside of these folds. Then as you bring up your highlights, you get this fantastic velvet look. You can see it start to develop here. And if you keep your shadows dark, you can get a very red velvet dress kind of look. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, at least your property values are, are good. You've, you could, I mean, your appreciation is good as far as, you know, you, if you sell the house, you'll have made money, right, Otter? Yeah, you got it for a steal. Yeah, so you totally. That's great. Hey, and then your house is your investment, which is like it should be, right? So. I can do paint sculpting, so maybe I can do paint renovating. <laughs> I don't know. I just think that anything, any house in our price range around here is just going to be like, it's going to be old and it's going to be small and it's going to be like, should we just knock this thing down and build on top, uh, you know, of the foundation? Because that's what most people around here are doing. Like when I see new building in the suburbs where we live, it's somebody's bought an old, like tiny house and is putting a really nice new house uh, where it used to be. All right, so... When you get to the point where a fold is really razor thin, like where it's just got this point up here, you can do a tiny high line highlight, just a little, little touch, but you make sure it's not a real strong, make sure your color is just slightly lighter than the surrounding area. And even then I might blend it in a little bit with a sideways stroke. Um, just because again, you don't want that line highlight. You want to actually see a blend there. That's the way, especially on velvet, which is which has those tiny threads that diffuse highlights. You don't want to ever see a lot. You'll never see a line highlight on velvet. Um, yeah, we looked up kind of like how much it costs to build a house in the Bay Area, and it's at least half a million. Like that's before you buy whatever was on the lot in the first place and pay to get it deconstructed. So yes, it's quite a venture. Yeah, it's not even McMansions because the lots around here are small because the houses were originally small, Twisted Oma. So, uh, so yeah, you couldn't even build a McMansion, but you could build a nice house. You can build a nice two-story. Oh, let's see, the, a lot of the old houses in the neighborhood in, here in Mountain View are, are ranches. They're small and they're ranches. So what people seem to be doing is buying these small lots, but then building a nice two-story on it. Oh, nice. That's great, Otter. Yeah, yeah, hardwood. Yep, yep. Yeah, there's, I am, I go back and forth on hardwood. The feel of real wood is really nice, but the high upkeep makes me kind of like, meh. also dog. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I go back and forth on hardwood. <laughs> Ironically, I think the townhome that we're looking at this weekend does have hardwood floors. But it, who knows? It might be a might be an up, might be a might be a down. I like tile. I don't know. Tile was in in Texas, and I got used to tile, and I really like tile, especially in the summer. But tile isn't as in fashion here. Oh yeah, I always read that that it you did have like more upkeep, and I'm I'm hard on houses, so I don't know if I could handle hardwood. Might have to get a maid service. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, a tile that looks like wood is nice. That's what um, Katie from Reaper had put into her house. It was very nice. I just, tile is so resilient. Like, And I like that tile can be more textured too, so it's not slippery. Yeah, yeah. Tile that, yeah, tile that, the tile that looks like wood is actually really classy and you can get it in a bunch of different colors. I was surprised at how good it looked when Katie got her got it in the house that she bought. So again, we're going sideways here, guys. Sideways stroke, really gentle, and don't go far in. Don't don't obliterate your darks. Now, if you if you do decide during the course of this that you hey, I like this lighter, brighter red. I think I do want to lighten this lighten this color more. Then you want to go further in on these folds and lighten them up more. But if, otherwise, if you're looking to keep a dark red. Look to keep a dark red.
Now, I did thin this down a bit. When you when your middle red or your your medium red is uh, thinned down, you can usually build up a couple of layers of it without losing your dark red very much. And that can give you a nice transition. Because reds do tend to be transparent, but that means that when you thin them, they become really good for layering. Like, you, you see, like, I did not have to really blend much. Like, I didn't have to glaze to get this to look blended on the front because the red likes to layer. It's, it's just that way. That's why I'm always saying that translucency in colors is a feature, not a problem. Like, many paint lines tend to treat it like it's a problem, but it's not. It makes it easier to layer colors. Um, so if you're trying to figure out, like, blending, it's much simpler. Oh. I think they're doing, and it's not even, like, it's not even outside my window, Pendrake. It's weird that you're picking it up. Because it's, to me, it's fairly soft, and it's, like, all the way on, like, the other side of the complex. Ah, oh, or it's, maybe it's trees across in the park. Like, it sounds like tree trimming, and the booming sound is, like... Actually, if it's gonna be loud like that, I have to... I think that's just the garbage truck, but... Yeah, I guess I have to close the window. One second, guys. That's bad, because it's gonna heat up in here. Yeah, the bamboo flooring is really interesting. I need a fan in here. I think I need to dig it out. Oh, yeah, it was the garbage truck. All right. All right, because I really want, I, well, I want my breeze if I can. All right, good. Yeah. Guess off, I'm going to lose one of my little curry trees, but the other little curry tree is doing very well. And my uh, my seedlings, my basil seedlings and my dill seedlings are growing. So here, here guys, look, this is a little curry tree. It's a tiny curry tree. Um, curry leaves. Curry leaves are used in Indian cooking in so some regional areas. Um, and so, and they're hard to find around here, although I did find an Indian grocery store that carries them. But I thought it would be kind of cool to grow my own little tiny curry tree, because you can grow them indoors if you have, um, yeah, curry tree. If you look at Indian recipes and it says curry leaves, fresh curry leaves, that's it. You want a cutting? I got them off Etsy. Like, there's a guy on there who is essentially trying to help his mom with some income, because she has a huge, she's got a yard with big curry trees, and has a ton of seedlings every year. So he's helping her package them up and, like, sending them out to people, and he sends them two at a time. I think probably because it's common for one to fail, but then you've got the other one. Um, so yeah, I got them. They weren't that expensive. Like two little curry trees, I want to say for like 15 bucks or something. But uh, curling, yes. <laughs> yeah, my. I mean, I tried to reposition my mic because it's unidirectional right now so that you wouldn't get a lot of outside noise. Because it is nice to have the fresh air coming in here. Oh no! Yeah, I've got my my Thai basils are growing. They're getting there. I probably need to rewater them in a second. I had to take their little hat off there. I probably need to replant them in pots at this point. But I'm trying to wait for them to get to the next set of leaves. Try not to repot them too early. Because right now they're still in their original little kind of peat moss pellets. Alright, let's get some... Let's get some color on the back side here. So again, I'm going to go mostly toward the bottom. That's mostly where light's going to fall because the dress tends to flare out at the bottom. It's just the way dresses tend to operate. But I'll go up a little bit. I just won't go very far. Like when I'm when I'm taking my highlight up on these dark reds, I I will um, narrow it. Like I'll I'll start pretty pretty broad at the bottom, but then I'll make it skinnier and skinnier until I'm just like doing dabbing, like little dabs of paint along the spine of the fold. So again, you're doing surface control. You're controlling how much surface is taken by your highlighting to control the color that the area looks. There. 
Ah, planting. Oh, nice. Yeah. We have a regular Italian basil plant out in the other room. We keep a, we have one windowsill that's sunny enough for our mint and our basil. So that's where uh, that currently lives. But these little seedlings, I decided to try to start under the grow light. And they're doing pretty okay. I'm so used to um, seedlings growing faster because I used to have a little hydroponic garden. And boy, they grow super fast in those things. But we don't have a lot of counter space for something like that right now. So I decided to do it the old-fashioned way. All right. And then again, down here, we're going to go pretty broad. You guys can see how we're maintaining a lot of dark. And if I feel like I'm getting out of control, if I feel like my highlights are getting too bright, then I'll come back in with my ergothoa or with, you know, my like black and brown mixed with ergothoa or something really dark to bring my darks back in. But yeah, I can't wait till the Thai basil is big enough to harvest because then I can seriously do some, uh, some Thai curries and uh, break into the new cookbook, which is like Malaysian and Thai and... Um, Vietnamese cooking, the new cookbook that David got me. I'm glad, really glad that he thinks I'm a good cook. He keeps buying me awesome cookbooks. <laughs> he keeps feeding my foodie habits. I certainly have become a good cook. I was never a good cook when I was younger. Like, I wasn't even really interested in cooking. Like, I, I learned to make a few very simple things and was proud of myself. But now, sky's the limit. So I'm bringing in some ergothoa to darken down that fold a little bit. Yeah, that's good, right, Kiri? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been pruning David's regular basil. But yeah, I remember that it tends to want to flower. Thanks for the reminder, Gastoff. These guys are tiny baby ones right now, so we'll see what we can do. All right, so bring a highlight right up the spine of that fold. There, that's a nice dark red. Yeah, I liked Good Eats and Iron Chef, and I probably, that was about when I was getting interested in it. I mostly, is because my ex, um, he was, my ex was really good at barbecue. Like, he was really good at doing meat. And so I just kind of wanted to cook just to kind of, like, balance things out because I was... I felt like he could cook and I needed to cook. And I wanted to cook. Like, he made me interested. I got back in... Julia Child, though, was actually my initial inspiration. And when I started learning to cook in earnest, I reached back for her books. So I, like, started by learning to do a good roast, roast bird, roast chicken, roast duck, stuff like that. Um... Things like quiches. I love quiches. Um, you know, I used a, a, her beef, her, um, her beef bourguignon, stuff like that, beef stews. And then I started to branch out. Now I'm just going crazy. Now I can cook Indian. Like, so now that the sky's the limit now, bring on the ethnic cookbooks. So we're bringing again, bringing that highlight. Remember, broader at the bottom because the dress is flaring out and we catch the light. Frittata, egg thing. Hey, <laughs> you've lived to tell about it, good Pendry. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I need to, I should probably clip my, our, tr uh, prune our rosemary. The problem is our rosemary is in a place where it does, we tried drawing herbs on our balcony and it just doesn't give, get enough um, light. It, it's doing okay, but it's not a vigorous plant. But I don't do very much with rosemary these days because I'm not cooking as much like French Mediterranean European Mediterranean, I should specify. All right, so again, bringing out. 
And again, we got a nice set of dark. So you got a nice rich dark red. I think it's looking really good on the front. So now let's bring in our orange. And our orange is going to start to be very, very small highlights. Ah. Yeah, The Joy of Cooking is, is one of those books. Like, my ex had it and, like, used it for exactly one thing, which was apple pies. But usually I'm not attracted to stuff like that. Mostly because I've got such a weird diet, right, Francis? Because I can't... I'm gluten-free and I'm low-carb, which means whenever I look at a book like The Joy of Cooking, I have to throw out 90% of it. Or, or figure out if the recipe sounds tasty enough for me to try to make it with alternatives, which often is, like hard for me to like like it has to be a pretty cool looking recipe for me to want to do it my favorite thing about indian cooking is that it's automatically low carb and in most cases except for the beans um but it tends to be low carb and gluten-free so so that means i can make these recipes without any modifications which is so refreshing <laughs> gallery of regrettable food oh that that sounds very awesome Yeah, yeah, I bet those are hard to get out of Mama, those older versions. So I'm looking at my lava e orange here that I mixed, and it might be a little bit too close to the red to make a good highlight. I'm going to see. I got to drop a little water in it. Oh, I got a stretch, too. Let's do a stretch. Let's do our stretches before I start a new color. How about that? That sounds good. So we'll get our, let's get our orc, orc in a focus here. And then we'll see our, take our stretch. And she always wants to, I always feel like I should turn her a little bit on her base so that you can, she can rest and you guys can see her well. There we go. Yeah. Right. And I can't use tomatoes, right? So that's like, like a lot of the Mediterranean stuff gets tossed right out unless I feel like I want to do a sub. The nice thing about the the Indian stuff is that um, because there are so many spices in it, when I do have to do a substitute for tomatoes, it works really well because the spices are the main flavor profile. So the tomatoes are usually just there for texture and body, which means when I have to sub peaches or, or roasted red peppers, it actually works great. Um, but some... Some Mediterranean dishes, the tomato is really there for, like, the tomato itself. And so I think, like, it'd be a less, it'd be a less good substitute, I guess. Oh, neat. Neat trash. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's rough, Francis. That's super rough. Everybody stretch. If you've been sitting for an hour, please come up and stretch. Especially if you have a sore COVID arm sh shot arm, like I do. So unlike everybody else I knew, like, the second time, the second punch, my arm was actually worse than the first one. Like, it was really bad yesterday. I couldn't live without fat because I'm on a low-carb diet, so it's like... Without, when you're on low carb, fat is your main calorie source. I can't imagine how hard that must be, Francis. Many feels to you. Many hugs. And spices, by God. Spices. But spices, they're so awesome. Oh, your arm was worse on the second shot too, Chibi? David got off easy. Ah. Yeah, I had a headache, too, last night. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Yay, lifting weights. Good job, Jabberwock. Oh, my, her my I hit a nerve. My nurse hit a nerve on the second one, too, Zen. I actually jumped. She was like, whoa! I was like, oops. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. You get Pfizer tomorrow for a shot? Good, good, good. 
Yeah, that's the one I had, Grey Mouser. Expect an, a sore arm. And they, di they do say you shouldn't rub it. You should stretch it instead. But, yeah. Alkaline diet. Huh. Yeah, weird. Yeah, well, no processed foods is, I mean, that's a healthy thing, I think. No sugar is hard. Yeah, I don't know, Twistedoma. <laughs> I'd ask for a second opinion. <laughs> oh, yeah, the nerve. Yep, mm-hmm. Oh, yuck. Yeah, post-op sucks. I mean, it's better than pre-op, right, when you're feeling bad, but I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do my floor stretches. I'll be right back, guys. Oh, hey, I finished the green work on my giant wolf lady this weekend, so I can start her soon. Oh, I made the mistake of sleeping on the shot arm. Yep, yep. Yeah, they say not to rub it, but to stretch it. That, that was the what the doctor told me and what the nurses told me. Yeah, I don't know. That's why I haven't heard... I've heard different things about alkaline water, but some doctors do endorse that sort of thing. So I don't know. I mean, it's so hard, right, guys? Every time you turn around these days, your doctors are telling you different stuff in the health, the health uh, profession. Like, a new study comes out, and suddenly this, you know? And that's just natural. That's the way science works, is you have to revise your, your opinions every once in a while. But... Yeah. Um, I try to avoid like painkillers, they tend to react with my guts trash with the stuff I've got going on. So Tylenol is okay, but it definitely does impact me. So I chose not to take it and just suffer through. Just like some of the other people on here, when you've already got a condition, then you have to kind of filter all the advice you're getting through an existing condition. All right. But yeah, definitely, you know, Every, there are so many different opinions in the healthcare fields. One doctor can tell you one thing and another doctor can tell you another. The only thing that surprised me about all that, because I was expecting doctors to have differing opinions about what the stuff I was doing, but my doctors came out like in support of my low carb, keto and low carb, like surprised me actually. Like the only person I ran into who wasn't sure about it was a nurse. But then the doctor, who the nurse was working with, was like, oh, yeah, you should be on that. I think pretty much if, if you, like, look at them and say, I lost I lost 60 pounds doing this, they kind of look and go, okay, then um, keep up the good work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not all doctors say the same thing, right? And it's okay to get a second opinion, right? It's okay. Like, and I guess it depends. Like, my old doctor in Texas, I'd been with her for over a decade. And we had, we thought the same. Like, I, I knew that she was, like, a good advocate for my health. And I trusted her opinions because we'd gone through a lot together. But now I've got a new doctor out here. And it's just building a whole new relationship, right? So, like, if she just told me something that seemed to go against what I was doing or what had worked, then I would, I would probably think about getting a second opinion. So I guess it depends also on how long you've been with your doctor, right? This makes sense. All right. That's true too, Grey Mouser. We do tend to like hear things a certain way. All right. I'm going to try to go up to, well, I'm going to add a little bit of my lighter orange into my darker orange, I think, and bring it up just a little bit. Remember with oranges, they look like they're really watery, but in actuality, you're still going to see brush strokes. Like, they're very much stronger than you think. Oh, being done for age risk. Yeah, that's the way they were doing it out here, too. Kerniko. Yeah, and different stuff works for different people. That's absolutely true. Everybody is different. I have friends who just can't do low, car low carb, but they, you know, can do other diets that work for them, but that didn't work for me. So it's what your body likes. 
Just experiment. And I think all of us experiment. All right, so now with the orange, very, very small. Half the size of my red highlight um, down here on the bottom. And you're going to think this isn't making much of a difference. Like, you're going to be like, well, this is such a tiny highlight. You can go back and forth with your red and your orange a little bit, too. Like, I often will intensify my red highlight, like, by layering layering down the orange and then I'll bring my red back in over the top of it and then I'll layer down the orange again and it'll essentially pop this lower see how it's starting to come up it'll pop this lower edge really hard which is the effect I'm kind of looking for when I do these dramatic dark reds and then we'll come back in with the orange again we're when it comes down to the orange though we're keeping it pretty small so it's coming up like that. Um, Crows talked about it a bit earlier. I think I'm going to go dark blue with the wrap and light blue with the crystal and the jar. And that's why I'm doing oranges for these highlights because orange is a complementary color for blue. So that lets me sneak in a complementary color. Uh, really subtle. Yeah, see, so now I start unliking how this is coming up. Yeah, I, get, I will say that I'm relieved that it's, like, done now and that I have had both shots in, a, in two weeks. I guess it'll be... Um, little less than two weeks now, but David and I are going to go down into the city and have a nice lunch and, uh, you know, walk around the Pavilion of the Arts and do some other stuff that we can feel a little better about doing now. And maybe we'll actually be able to get a role-playing game started up again or something. Or a game night, like board game night would be fun too. All right, so the orange just come, comes up like this. So you can see the difference between these two folds, right? And yet they're really not like, it's really not lighter. I'm keeping a lot of the dark here. Now, one thing I do need to watch out for is to make sure that I don't cover up a lot of my medium red because then you're going to have this orange highlight on this dark red. It's not going to look quite right. So do make sure that you've still got your fire red enough of it that you've got that still got that red shift. And you can always kind of layer it over the edge of the orange if you want to. It's a subtle thing, but subtle things do work when you're trying to introduce like a complementary color. You don't necessarily want that complementary color just like bang and you know be instantly like recognizable just the fact that you're using it is going to make the blue look more intense so um pinks but you don't want to definitely you you want to be careful like if you do dark I, I would just take your red and add white that's a, actually that's what i've done like trash for several of the past streams as i've i've been working with lighter using red with with um pinks but if I were going to do that with this, I would take my fire red and just start adding little bits of white and build it that way. The problem with using other pinks is that you don't know, one, you don't know what red pigment were, was used in the pink unless you have a really good eye for it. And so you have to make sure that, you know, you're using one that's compatible with what you've already got. Two, if they've muted the pink at all, it's not going to look right. Um, you want it to be pretty, pretty pure if you're going to use it as a highlight. When you look at red in the sunlight, it's not going to be muted except by white light. So it's like, you have to be careful with what you use on reds. Um, I mean, you can get away with some more vibrant skin tones, a very pinky skin tone, something like, like, um, 9446. You could get away with that or even rosy skin. Uh, if you, but it'll give you a more organic and not, it's not going to be like a dye. Like dyes tend to fade like that, but they don't tend to highlight like that. Yeah, I don't know about the Johnson & Johnson shot. 
I mean, it was such a rare thing to happen, but definitely, I don't know. I'm split on that. But anyway, so yeah, when you're, when you're working, I usually, I've started by working up with pinks on her, but now I'm just working up with oranges because I prefer it on this model. I, I want to have kind of like the red velvet look. And I find that if you want the red velvet look, your, your highlights need to be more saturated, more higher chroma. I also think the dark red thing tends to work a little better, in my opinion, with going up with oranges. Yeah, you could get away with that, then, with the right sculpt. Just use a lot of glazes. You'd be glazing with the bright pink and glazing over it with the blue. You probably would paint the light pink over it, then paint some white and glaze the blue. But, yeah, I don't know. I'd have to see the exact thing. But I mean, you have two ways to do red. You can do it what I call the cold way, which is to bring it up with white. Or you can take it the warm way and pick it up with orange. Like those are, you can also do like if you're doing a muted red, you can choose skin tones. But, but again, that's going to give you something that's less intense. So it all depends on how vibrant you want your red to look. If you're really looking for that candy red, then bringing up with orange is you're really the way to go. I find it a lot harder to do that with pinks. Yeah, I mean, whenever you get um, a, a shot or a health procedure, always keep your eye out for side effects. That's just, that's, I think that's just smart, good self-advocacy. Read up and, and don't scare yourself, right? That's a hard thing, right, is to be educated without scaring yourself. Because <laughs> I certainly find that the, uh, just this, you know, the suggestion thing, I forget what David calls it. There's an effect thing where if you find out that there could be a side effect and suddenly you're, you're thinking you feel the side effect, but you really aren't like there is that thing, but always err on the side of, uh, of your own, you know, good advocacy for your own health. Stay healthy, fam. That's what we want. Be as healthy as you can. Be good to yourselves. There we go. So I'm bringing up even a little bit of the orange there. Going to start bringing it up here now. That's about the right level. Yeah, we want to... Well, we've got a Hawaii trip planned this fall after ReaperCon. I am looking forward to going back to Hawaii. Although I am like, we're doing the big island this time. So I'm like hoping that I like it as much as I like Tanalulu. I love Oahu. So again, going over it with my fire red and then a little bit of my orange. I'm kind of building those things up until I have a nice, strong poppy highlight on the bottom. It's getting there, Red Lancer. It's getting there. I think the final touches of orange, and actually I even take this up to yellow, guys, believe it or not, but it's a tiny yellow highlight. Um, but these finishing touches are really what makes this red work. Like, you could stop with just the red itself without the orange, and you would probably feel happy, but I really feel like the extra little touches are what makes this this color. Because it's the contrast between those warm little highlights and the dark, dark folds that um, makes everything really come up. But again, make sure that you're not totally losing your reds. So bring back your fire red. Um like I did there, if you feel like you're losing it. But yeah, but this is what I mean. If I ever look at you, at your reds, and I say, hey, you know, that's great, but it would be even better with a couple more highlights. And if you look at me and say, but it's a dark red, I'm going to go, you need to watch this video. Dark red is perfectly attainable with highlights. Any dark color. 
And it depends on the fabric again, right? Like here we're kind of going for a red velvety kind of color. That kind of effect. Which technically, if I was being realistic, I wouldn't necessarily go up to orange or yellow. But this is the way I like to do it. So we're going to say that it's like maybe an orangey red, dark red. I don't know. I just like it. I always used it on vampires. But this, this itself is more of a velvet kind of highlighting fashion. And you don't want to ever take fabric up to white unless it's a silk or satin. Something that's shiny. Unless you are working, of course, with a, an off-white fabric or a very light fabric. Hmm. You know what, though? I just noticed I have kind of a fault on this fold. I wonder if I can take it off with my knife. Hey, should we do some surgery, guys? Okay, so you can all be sweating this as much as me. So sometimes I'll notice I've gotten a paint bubble or something, a small flaw in the paintwork. So right now I'm noticing there's a small flaw in the paintwork, like right here. And this can be the case with, um, here, let me see if I can get this in focus. Do, 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 do. Beep. So I'm seeing a kind of a fault or a flaw in the paintwork, like right here. Sometimes if you see a hair or something that's got buildup, you can actually use a knife really gently and just scrape away like the top layer of paint and get that. You want to be so gentle though, because you don't want to make a divot. I kind of just took off a little bit of the layers of paint right there. It's gone down to the base coat in a couple of little spots, which means it probably was actually a fault in the bones material that I just missed. But then I'm going to just run my knife blade over it. If I can't feel the texture anymore, then I've done a good job. And doing it that way, using the flat of the blade, I actually kind of just brought up, um, I kind of ground down the paint gradually like I didn't do a divot I didn't cut out that area I just scraped my blade lightly over the top and what that means is I should be able to paint over this without having a divot in the paint job it should actually paint over smoothly sometimes when you take out if you if you accidentally tear paint up you leave this divot in the paint and that that's hard to come back from without using primer to fill in the divot but here because I did the scrape and tried to make it smooth and tried to integrate it into the paint layers. Here I'm getting no divot and I fixed the problem. So there is a quick paint surgery. Don't try this at home. Oh, actually do try this at home, but be, do, try it on an expendable model so you get good at it. And also my, um, do not use a super sharp exacto for this. Mine is fairly dull so that I can do things like that light scraping without taking a bun bunch of paint up. Oh, good. Yeah, somebody here on the stream. I don't remember. Yeah, I just have a lot of lint and sometimes leftover Kiri hairs come up to cling to the models. All right, so taking my fire red just to kind of bring out that fold a little bit more. I will bring my orange in. And I've totally fixed that problem. Like, the divot is gone. Like, I can't see it anymore. Yeah, when you've got a lot of cats, that can be very challenging to keep pet hair out. It's better if you catch it right away. Like, when you're painting, always keep a sharp eye out for it. It's most likely to attack you when you're doing washes or glazes or base coats. Um, and try to get the pet hair off right away or the lint or anything. It's just if you've got a lot of stuff in the air around you. If you can't, then yeah, keep a dull X-Acto knife around and practice with that technique, that scraping technique, to see if you can make it work because it can be a lifesaver. Yeah. Yeah, that's a deterrent. It's nice, I mean, it's bad at first when the cat does that and sprays your water all over the place, but at least it deters the cat from then being on your painting desk. Yeah. 
So a little bit of orange. And once again, just a tiny bit. I will, on these little sharp folds, I will sometimes bring the orange up the spine of the fold just a bit. Just because I don't want to bring the orange too far in. Because again, we're, we're keeping our red here. We just want these little tiny touches. See see how that bit of orange like makes that fold like just jump out now against that dark shadow? Well, <laughs> then, then I would advise you to find a model she especially likes, Quindy, and keep it full of wet paint at the edge of the desk. And then it can be her personal project. Because, I mean, come on. There we go. Boom. A little bit of orange just makes a ton of difference. And then when we add the blue, that'll that'll work as well against with all of this. So what I'll probably do then is when I do choose my browns for this, I will be adding the same orange to bring up highlights, probably. Oh my gosh. Nine foster cats would be a bit much for me. Yeah, cats are cats are little dictators. It's true. Had cats for a lot of the last 20 years of my life. This is the first time I haven't had one for a very long time. Although I, I think I'm going to be a dog household and not a cat household for a while. I just want one pet for a while. So once I get a Kiri... A Kiri, um descendant and we'll just have the dog for a while because that way it's so it's so much easier to like find boarding or something if you're going on vacation yeah yeah your cats are coordinated Kariniko Like, do they clock in and clock out? <laughs> it's like, oh, all right, I'm off shift. You take over. She's painting something super awesome right now, so make sure to get fur on it. There. Again, just a little bit of edge. But do you guys see how that's coming up now? Like, how much... Do you see the impact the orange has? Like, just a little bit of extra punch. And it's tiny, right? It's just little tiny things, but tiny touches can make a big difference. And on these little folds, I'm just going to put a dot. Like, the, the tiniest touch of orange. And I probably will skip the dark orange. I'll go straight to my, um, straight to my, more like a pure sunrise color. Hold on, I gotta, gotta make sure that I'm not losing my red, though. As you can see, I added a little bit of highlight there, but I got to make sure that I'm, I've got that fire red as my principal. It's very easy to get kind of this embery effect, and you can use this purposefully on fire fire creatures. If you did this with a fire creature, you could purposefully work to get rid of most of your red and replace it with dark orange and still keep these brown purple shadows. And you'd end up getting kind of like a glowing metal effect, kind of, if you kept it to the edges. So, like, on things like Fire Giants, you could do that. You could dispense with the red and go mostly black, purple, blue, and orange. And uh, get some really dramatic effects with this technique in particular. Yeah, that's true, D. Clearman. I was a Wile E. Coyote fan. I played Wile E. Coyote. I was one of the characters in costume at Six Flags Grid America. When I was in my teens, I was, uh, that was my job for a while. I worked at the amusement park during the summers. So I would get in the costume and walk around and Wile E. Coyote was always kind of funny because the kids would, were, would be afraid of you. Like, they'd love Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. Wile E. Coyote walks up and the kids are like, yeah, and they run away. Which, considering I wasn't big into kids when I was younger, it was awesome. <laughs> the other thing they tried to do, people will try to do when you're in costume as a character, is they'll try to figure out if you're a girl or a guy. Which was always really annoying to us. So essentially, I got a really good grip. <laughs> that was when I developed a really good handshake. 
Because if you could give them a really good hard handshake, they'd be sure you were a guy. And then they wouldn't give you as much crap. Go figure, it was the 80s. So, that, that was funny. Trying to convince them. This was mostly teenagers and college students, of course. Your Pikachu at the shop? That's awesome, Mighty Lancer. Yeah, I mean, it was fun. It was fun to be a character. It taught me a lot. About, like, just interacting with people without talking. It was just, uh... Interesting. It also gave me probably my beginnings of my heat acclimation that would later uh, um, serve me in good stead in, in Texas as, you know, we, I think we stuck a thermometer in my suit an 11 a.m. walk one morning in the summer, uh, and it was already 140 degrees in that costume. So, being in a fur costume in the middle of the summer, even if it is in Wisconsin... Still can be pretty harrowing. We did have our, um, our Bugs Bunny was a really great dynamic guy. And he would dance his butt off for, like, the parade in the evening. But he did fall over from heat exhaustion one day. It was a thing. Hey, Winterkill. How's it going? <laughs> it was kind of cool being able to interact with people but not be yourself about being in costume. That was that was actually kind of cool. So yeah, guys, so here we go. So see that bright, now we got that nice bright edge there. Now we gotta fade it in a little bit. Oh, good. Alrighty. So we've got, let's zoom out. Let's Actually, I want to go back up and t drop some red in that midsection a little bit. And we need to do the sleeves because the sleeves haven't been touched. Making good progress on this model today, though. Yeah, that's nicer. I like that. All right sleeves. We've got buttons on these sleeves too, but I'm going to just ignore the buttons and just paint the sleeves. Now, yeah, that's what I wanted. Velvet that's what this was for. That's exactly what I was aiming for, Kroniko. Alright, now one thing I will do here is I'm going to bring my orange in. I would normally use white for this sort of thing, but since I'm going up with such saturated colors here, I'm going to use my orange instead, because orange, again, has surprising coverage. You, you wouldn't think it, but it does. So if I bring orange in to accentuate that little fold down there at the uh, elbow. And I also bring it in above. You can essentially use it for underpainting. It's not going to be as harsh as the white, but it's going to keep your saturation when you put the red over the top of it. So if you can see, see these little lines I'm doing here. And then I'm going to pop a little bit in right there. So I'm putting tiny touches of orange and tiny lines of orange in here where I want to accentuate a very small area. And I'm going to go over where I put those in. I'm going to go over those lines with a red. I want to make sure they're nice and strong, though, because they're going to be mostly wiped out if they're not. So not doing a layering brush stroke here, just trying to bring out detail. And like I said, normally with this kind of underpainting, I would use white, but... I want this uh, really, really vibrant red, so I'm using orange instead. So I'm going to take my red then, and I'm going to thin it just a tad. And I'm going to, oh, got a, got a hair. Speaking of hairs and lint and leftover kiri fur, I'm going to paint that red over that orange for this layer. 
That's gonna, see how rich that red went when I did that, when I put the orange down and then painted the red over the top. So that's, now, now compare that sleeve to the one we haven't touched yet, right? So. Alrighty, let's see here. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, but I'm only, since I don't have that, that kind of elbow detail there, I'm just going to do it for my upper part of the arm here. And a touch there. Then I'm going to bring my red in. And paint it over the orange. It'll get really rich. So took it down a little bit too much there. Now I need to go back in and re-highlight. I have these little buttons here too, which actually I'm going to grab some white just to bring those little buttons up. Yeah, Shadow Raven, have a great lunch. Oh, and now we've got a leaf blower outside. I will close the window. And we've only got five minutes left anyway. They always love to do lawn things, like right around the time I'm streaming. And you know, people have got to be on video calls and crap all over the place, too. <laughs> yeah, the red's coming along. I'm very happy with it. Now I'm going to just, I want to get those buttons highlighted so they're not just a eyesore. Or just at least what I do is I put, a, put white on them, just like I've done white on all of the belts and stuff, to remind myself that they're there and I need to deal with them. So... There we go, just a little bit of white on my brush and then I can make sure that those buttons stand out. Because it was getting hard to kind of see detail there, so I was like, hmm. I want it to be evident visually that there is detail there. There, all those nice, the buttons are a nice touch, I will say. They're very classy, They they give you the the feeling that she is a civilized half-orc, which I really enjoy about this model. Oh, I found a half-orc bust, finally. I'm debating whether to get it. It would let me do uh, this skin tone on a bigger model. But, I don't know, I'm debating. Maybe I should just turn a, a different bust into a half-orc. Actually, maybe I should uh, do one of the, um, it's pretty easy to make a human into a half-orc. Maybe I should take one of my Muse models and turn it into a half-orc. There we go. All right. Now I do want to bring up the orange in a couple other places. I want to bring it up right next to my lace. Just all surfaces that would that would be up against the light here. They would catch the light. And 
then I do want to bring up a little bit more. Again, where things are facing the light is where you're going to get more highlight. So I'm going to bring up a little bit of orange, just a tiny touch. Remember, we still want this to be red. So we don't want to bring in too much orange, but we want enough for highlighting. There. Might be a little bit too much orange there. I think it's going to be another really hot day today here. Little tiny touches of orange to bring out those details. There we are. Let's go and do some really quick back here. Then we'll. I missed yesterday, so if I go a little late today, it's not a big deal. I went late on Thursday too, so. So hopefully I make up a little bit of my hours. Wow. Yeah, that's why I think it's likely to be high 80s here. It was high 80s here yesterday. Which I really love because I love working out on the balcony. Get an icy, icy drink and uh, go work outside. Though I have to shoot some video today too for the Patreon, so... Speaking of which, this is my opportunity to say, Hey guys, I have a Patreon! And it's awesome, and you should go look at it, because there's some free stuff, too. But it's patreon.com slash paintingbig. So if you like my teaching style, and you enjoy the way I do teach, and you might want more content from me that's maybe more focused and less talking about cats than <laughs> and plants and food, um, then please head on over to patreon.com slash paintingbig and uh, check me out. I have some very inexpensively priced tiers. I know everybody's got their dollars fighting, you know, for all all sorts of different things these days, but uh, I would very much appreciate your support and thank you. Alrighty. Do -do -do. So just little touches of the orange. See how it's just little touches there at the edges just to bring out those edges. Tiny bits. Little little embers. You could imagine her as a fire mage. Yeah, I, it's like I said, I don't mind if I go like 10 minutes over today because I, I mean, I missed yesterday. So if I go a little over, it just makes up hours. And I was like almost a half hour over earlier or later last week. So hopefully, hopefully all together it'll balance out. I like to make my hours. I don't like being behind in hours. All right. And then this one, I didn't quite bring the orange up as much. There. Just a little tiny bit of orange. Just to bring up that brightness. It's not quite where I want it. Having to do that layering the red over the orange and then orange again kind of thing to bring it up. Remember you can use this vertical stroke at the ends of folds. Try not to use it when the folds are longer and narrower. Go across instead. There we go. Now it's really looking fiery. That's good. That picks it up. Yeah, there we go. Only downside, not much cats. <laughs> That's true. Do I need to paint a kitty? But I have a wolf. I have a giant wolf and not a giant kitty. Although I have been eyeballing the uh, black crow, uh, like giant saber tooth tiger with the barbarian chick on top of it. Been looking at her for a while. All right, guys. So I think... Oh, end of this, the back side of the sleeves. We're almost done. We're actually going to finish the red today, or at least we're going to get it to the point where I can add just little touches of yellow next time. So I'm going to go until my red is all at that stage of doneness. Oh, 
Oh, there are buttons on that side, but I don't see buttons on this side. Hmm. Or is that, are those buttons, is that just features? Maybe it's just features. Sometimes the, the details are a little tiny. It's kind of hard to see. All right, we're gonna use our orange. Let's bring up that and this and that and that. Paint some red over it. Let's bring it up really rich. Then do a final highlight. Cool. Yeah, Pendrake, I figured, I mentioned it earlier. Um, there's going to be dark blue. Her wrap is going to be dark blue and her crystal and, and uh, potion bottle are going to be light blue. I may add, I may shift the color toward red at the tip up here and add some fluid of a different color in here. Um, just to repeat the red a bit. So I haven't decided that for sure. But it depends on how the color composition looks at that point. But yeah. That's something you can do if you want to add another color without adding another color, is just choose one of your other colors. And if you use a dark version of that color on part of the model, use a light version of that color on the other part of the model. Alrighty, just a little bit more highlight here on her cuffs and we'll have, have all of our red to the correct um, point. And we may, I may actually, she's got hair ties, I forgot. Let me do red there too. But yeah, I have a lot of uh, a lot of video work planned for today. Got to catch up since I was sick yesterday. The only thing about being sick is like you get that that sick day where you don't really have to do anything, but then you have to come back and make up for it afterwards. There we are, a nice rich red. Very rich. Rich and dramatic. How's that look? Mm-hmm. Pretty darn cool, I think. Let's see. Let's do our zoom out. Zoom out back up. There we go. So there we are. So what we have to ask, some questions we ask ourselves. One of the other reasons I'm thinking of going light blue for the crystal and light blue for the bottle are that... Right now, the lightest thing on the model is her skin. So if I want more light colors to contrast, because I may go very dark with the leather, I haven't yet decided. Um, but we know we're going dark blue with this. So we're doing dark, and we've got kind of a dark medium red, and then we've got kind of a medium light skin tone. So if we go real pale with these, we're, we're once again using light colors, you know, medium light colors, medium dark colors, and dark colors, you know. Or if I decide to go more medium with the leather, so we've got medium dark and medium and medium light and light. So kind of always be looking at your lights and darks across the model and figure out, you know, what makes sense for you. Um, you want to include a variety of lights and darks on your model. When you're planning your color schemes, be very conscious of this. Because it's the best way to get details to stand out on small models is to alternate light and dark or light, medium and dark across the model. And you can always kind of use your color wheel to figure out whether a color is, what range of color is in by, by using your grayscale. So the key is in keeping it small, Twisted Oma. Like I said, I'm going to go up to pure, to lantern yellow on those. I'm going to actually put a tiny pop of yellow on there and see if I like it toward the end. But yeah, you, you, but you can, you see what I mean though. You still get a great dark red. There is no doubt in your mind looking at this model that that dress is red. It does not look orange. And so that's the key is keep your orange highlights small and use them to make your red really intense and rich. That's what you're aiming for. Well, good, Ilar. You should. It's fun. I mean, as somebody who comes from a 2D art background, um, miniature painting has actually taught me more about working with paint, like the actual nuts and bolts of working with acrylics, uh, than canvas painting ever did. Um, and it's taught me more about color theory, more about color composition, co about textures, lighting. It honestly has helped my 2D art immensely um, to start thinking in 3D and tiny. Um, and I paint a lot of larger stuff as well, but um, obviously. But uh, 
but it really has I, I think that this hobby people underestimate how well it can inform your other artistic hobbies So cool. I think we're we're good. We went 15 minutes over, so that'll that'll help make up my time deficit. I hope you guys had fun today. We we highlighted our dress and showed how you can add orange in highlights without making your dress orange. Just keep your highlights littler. Keep them focused where the light is falling, the areas that the light would hit and that you want to bring out detail. I'm very happy with this dress. I really like her. I haven't painted this red for a long time. This is the red I used to be famous for. Like back on eBay when I was painting a bunch of vampires and uh, vampires in chaos and uh, blood angels. This is the red that got me noticed. Like I did red, nobody else did red like me. I was always doing this. So I even afterwards, years afterwards, I would have people mention that, oh yeah, I love how you do red. But then I went to a whole different way to do doing red. I haven't done this for a while. Cool. So yeah, there we go. What do you think, Reaper? Oh, and tomorrow is we're hey we're G we're back at the genie, and I did putty her butt. <laughs> I did green work. Obviously, when I did the green work for um for Orky here, I also puttied the butt of the um the genie. So we will be able to do genie tomorrow. And uh, hey guys, so I, I mentioned I finished the putty. Hey Winterkill, you're gonna love this model. She it's big. She's got a spear. I seem to recall you like wolves. So that's from Limbo. It's a 75 millimeter. It's supposed to be like a kind of a goddess avatar on top of a giant dire wolf. I think I'm going to paint her as a frost giant though. I'm going to paint her like she's 28 millimeters. I just paint her like a frost giant. Riding the biggest winter wolf you ever saw. So yeah, so that's, I get to prime that now. It's all ready to be primed. All right, we're rating Brush for Hire. Everybody have a wonderful day. Please show up tomorrow for the genie. And uh, we'll have some fun painting like ethereal swirly stuff. All right? Have a great one. Thanks, guys, for coming out and supporting me.